Konnichiwa minasan. Kirk here from jamaipanese.com. Welcome to episode 9 of the JA podcast. This episode is being recorded on April 14th, 2020, in the middle of the corona pandemic. In the last episode I did an interview with Ariel Matthews, who is from the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Ariel talked about her experiences as someone arriving fresh in Japan on the JET program. I highly recommend you listen to that episode if you haven't. Today, we are keeping things tropical, but instead of someone proverbially fresh off the boat, let's talk to someone from the Caribbean who has been living and working in Japan for a long time. My guest today is Dave Collimore who is somewhat of a celebrity in the Jamaican community here in Japan. I hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. Please leave your feedback in an email to contact at jamaipanese.com or find me on Twitter at jamaipanese. Episode 9 of the JA Podcast begins now. Welcome to the JA Podcast, Dave. How are you? I'm doing well. Not too bad. Working from home for the past two weeks now because of the COVID-19 thing. But yeah. good otherwise, yeah. Well, and these are some really serious times. Yes, but, sir. You know, we have to make it through this. So, tell me about yourself. How long have you lived in Japan and why did you move here? Came here back in uh, 2008, so that would be 12 years ago, wow. or, well, over 12 years ago, mm -hmm. and um, the main reason why I came here was just adventure. I wanted to see what it was like uh, over in the east, so been to several countries in the west, and I wanted to see what it was like over this side, so I just um, decided to pretty much quit my job. And um, just wow. moved to Japan. Job. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The plan was just to stay one year, though. Um, but every year, I say, one more year, one more year, one more year. And then, actually, after my third year, um, because I was living in the rural parts of Japan, in this uh, prefecture called Okayama, mm -hmm. I was there for three years and then I decided okay I'm gonna stay one more year and um, I didn't want that one more year to be in the countryside because I heard I visited Tokyo a couple mm -hmm. of times I wanted to see what it was like in the city yeah big I city to life move the city life yeah so the plan was to move to Kobe because I, 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 I really enjoyed Kobe but um, I couldn't get I couldn't actually get a job in Kobe yeah, there's a lot of Jamaicans in, in Kobe as well. Say that again? There are a lot of Jamaicans in Kobe as well, right? That was That's the reason why I wanted to move there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because um, there are a couple of Jamaicans in uh, Kobe and Osaka area. I didn't want to go to Osaka. I wanted to go to Kobe. Mm -hmm. Because it had, a, it, had a, it had an impact on me. So I wanted to move there. Couldn't get a job there. And I heard that Yokohama was a happening town and it's quite near to Tokyo so I decided like all right let me try Yokohama because I could I could actually get a get a job there in Yokohama Yokohama city mm -hmm. so that long and short that 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 was it pretty much and I actually spent one one year in Toyama I don't know if many people know where that is that's another countryside area um spent a year in Toyama um doing teaching at a junior high school while being a trainer in 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 my in the in, in in yokohama as well so okay was it it in toyama that you did some kind of television work um the tv the yeah the tv program that i had was in okayama so that was the first three years ah uh, i see a couple months after i moved to japan actually um mm. so I, I came here i came here in march 2008 i think i got that tv gig maybe in about november december of 2008 and it went on for three years yeah yeah i remember those those videos from way back <laughs> when i was <Yeah>. in jamaica 
And I was like, wow, this dude in Japan, you know, doing him his TV gig while still doing his teaching, you know, it was quite an inspiration. But yeah. tell us, tell us more about Dave. Who is Dave Collymore? Um, me, who am I? Um, I, I, I like, I would call myself someone who likes to entertain. I like to entertain and I like to be entertained. Okay. Um, I like this when people laugh. And also just like to be in a in a setting where like just with around just with friends around and we're just talking and everybody having a good time. I like that kinda of, I like that kind of setting, you know? Yeah. Um mm. chatting, hanging out. Um I like traveling, I like soccer, a good game of soccer always um is is quite enjoyable to me. Interesting. Um yeah, any anywhere where the fun is, that that's that's where I want to be. I like talking to people, um, entertaining people. Like you know, there's this thing that that I have going on named um, language exchange. Mm -hmm. So just a group of people come together and, and we just talk. Yeah. Some people come and tell 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 about themselves, um, and we just ask some questions like, what what's the most memorable moment of your life, kind of thing. And we just talk. So that 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 kind of thing. Um, I like. I really like doing. So that that's pretty much me. Interesting. Um, yeah. So what are some of the things professionally or or and or personally that you have achieved since moving to Japan? Mm. Um generally speaking I would say like my my the word personal not meaning personal personal but mm. stuff that I do privately is more active than my professional life in my opinion. I see. So uh Privately, I've published uh, two books. Uh, sometimes I forgot the name of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have the first one, um, I, or the um, second one. I'm not even sure, but I have one of them. Okay, good, mm -hmm. good, good. So, poetic expressions of peace and love, and that was written when uh, that was written ten years ago. Wow, 2010. Okay. And the other one is seeing Japan through the eyes of a Jamaican expat. I'm guessing that's the one that you have. Yeah, that's the one I have. Right. Um, and this one was published back in 2015. Oh. Yeah. Also, as you said, I had a TV program going on. And I actually had a radio program similar to what you're doing now. But it's an internet online radio show. Um, I, I don't even remember the name. D D Dave Toishani, Fun Entertainment and Learning. See, yeah, I did like... One of the things them from a long time. Couple, yeah, it's just you know fun. Um, I did it for I did it for how long? Maybe half a year mm -hmm. or a year. But I, I found out <coughs> it's it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I found out because it was a Japanese a Japanese thing. Somebody introduced me to it. I found out that um I I had to pay to do my recordings. I found out afterwards, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like a studio time thing i don't know what it was but to keep the to keep the channel the it's, it's an it's, it was an uh, am am frequency thing yeah to keep it going i had to pay wow so it's more like me advertising the channel and people would people would actually listen in i i was i was i heard that my my my, my show got to like number two after like two months, how else else someone being on it? Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to pay to do my stuff. I mm. this. I should be paid. That, that's why I was thinking. I should be. Paid. <laughs> I shouldn't be paying to do this. Mm -hmm. so that that was the idea in my mind. So after six months, I I cancelled. But mm. I mean, it was still it was still a still a good experience, you know. Yeah. So you started out as an ALT, and then. Onto other things, right? Um, so that's the private part, and I did mm. a lot of other stuff as well that I can't really. I did some export and all kind of different things. Um, mm. I did. Uh, I also I also started a little side business, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, um, a little Dave's hustling, as we Jamaicans would say. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Dave's Learning Center, where people can come and just same thing talk. We just talk. Um, mm -hmm. Just have conversations about different topics like 
traveling or sports or whatever. Um, professionally, I started out as an ALT. Um, I did that for six years. And then um, the company that I work for, they, they, they called me, asked me if I wanted to be a trainer. So I started training um, what we call ALTs, assistant language teachers, for, uh, for the Yokohama, Yokohama branch of my company. Mm-hmm. Uh, started training ALTs just for the branch. First, first thing that I did was to, I, I was in charge of one, 150 ALTs, which was madness, to be whoa. honest. But whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. Um, for several different boards of education, so 150. So it was very busy, very hectic. Mm-hmm. Then after that, I got thrown into Toyama. That's how the Toyama thing came in. Oh, that's the one year thing. Toyama for a while. Mm-hmm. So even though I was in Toyama teaching, I was still in, uh, every now and again, I would take a flight back to Yokohama to do training. Mm-hmm. And then after that one year stint of working in Yokohama and in uh, Toyama, the head office called me and said, we want you to work in the head office. So oh, yeah, someone moving up. I don't know if it's moving up. It's, <laughs> it. If, if you look at it from the outside, it, it probably looks like moving up. But mm-hmm. personally, it don't feel like moving anywhere. <laughs> it's, more, <laughs> it's, more, it's more lateral. It's like, come, let me, we'll move it from here to here. Yeah, it sounds very but Japanese. People, people look up to the position, I guess. Mm-hmm. So um, from the outside, it looks like that way. So I, I've been in the head office since 2015. Wow. Um, doing different stuff like uh, sometimes training, training new teachers that coming into Japan mm-hmm. and making like materials. Uh, so the, the name of the job is 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 uh, training consultant and contents developer. Sounds fancy. So I so the the different branches in my company that they, they, they come to me for like advice with training and I go there and do training as well and I create training materials um, for them to use in in their training so I create it and say all right here it is use it mm-hmm. and then I go there and kind of watch some time and say all right let me see if you're doing this thing the right way and we also create like online online stuff so right now we're kind of in demand because of the online you know, yeah, everything the is corona, on, on coronavirus online. business that's going on now as we record this. Of course, we're creating a coronavirus course right now. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, this corona thing is 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 crazy. Um, I've also been hearing things about the Jamaicans in Japan Association. Um, how oh, are right. you involved with that? Yeah. So um, right now. Well, recently, we haven't been doing a lot because of the same corona thing. But mm-hmm. um, I think I, I, I've been a part of it since, I think, maybe 2016. 2000, yeah, 2016, late 2016. Um, the Jamaicans in Japan is a group of, uh, well, if you're a Jamaican in Japan, you're a part of it. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm a part of the steering committee that helped to, uh, we have um, different activities and stuff that we try to keep to keep the the, the community together. It's, it, it's basically creating a community in Japan of Jamaicans for us to, you know, have a chat, relax, sometimes have some activities, and we link with the 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 the, the, the Jamaican embassy in Japan, mm-hmm. and um, we 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 col- collaborate on different stuff. Yeah. Sometimes we have like um, barbecues, we have um, like little information sessions. And another thing, something that we have in, usually have in Christmas is the, uh, what your name again? Jamaica Jamaica Charity Gala, where we give to a charity in, 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 uh, in Jamaica. But that, that, that's, we, we, we work along with, for that particular event, we work along with um, Sasha Lee, who is um she she has been here for a couple of years as well longer than me and she's the she's usually the main organizer for that and we 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 join with her um to make that thing go on yeah jamaica yeah. charity gala when since i've been here um you know unfortunately i'm out in the sticks but like <laughs> right, i've right. always i always see like the events happening on different um 
activities and i used I really, to be like that as well yeah i want to you know in the future hopefully i don't know how long i'll be here <laughs> but yeah. i love to be able to participate and be a part of that you know i really of course, of course, i really course. you know good. admire the community building that you and others have been doing because we have to stick together in this strange land and you know yes, when yeah, i do yeah. get a chance to link up with some jamaican some yardies yeah. even just like caribbean people on a whole like it's a different type of feeling to know that you know in this foreign land you have some people you can really chat pato and go on with the things them with as we yep, say yep 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 understood of yeah. course so moving on so you know we live in japan both of us years now yeah. Um, you know, I've had my experiences, good and bad, but, you know, I'm sure the listeners want to also hear about you as a long-term resident here. Um, mm-hmm. First, what has been your absolute worst experience living in Japan so far? Um, one of my worst experiences that I can highlight now is, is yeah, back in 2016. You see how long it takes? 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, uh, you know, Japan is like a roller coaster. I, tell, I always tell people, if somebody, if I could describe Japan, it's like a roller coaster. It's like the highs are highs, but mm-hmm. the lows are really lows. Yeah, man. I learned it myself. So every we go through all kind of different things. Um, and because you're kind of pretty much out in the wilderness, quote unquote, by yourself, you have to kind of like encourage yourself. You have to dig deep down. And um, some it, it actually helped me like get more creative. You understand? One of the things that one of the biggest things that, that that hit me was when I started having um, panic attacks or anxiety attacks. And people don't like to talk about it, but right mm-hmm. now, right now I, 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 I feel very empowered to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I got married in 2015 and um, I decided, you know, just something, just I saw this advertisement on the, on the train. I said, Let, you know what, that looks interesting. You know what? That housing thing, hmm. and I started, before you know it, I was, after seeing the advertisement, I was looking at houses on the internet. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this is not so bad. I wonder if I can try one of them things. So I run it by my wife, and she said, all right, let's we'll see if this can work. And the next week, I was on the road looking for houses. Didn't know the process at all. Just me, I said, me want to buy a house. <laughs> yeah. So, now the, this thing come now. Every every a, a couple times per week we're in meetings and some whole heap of paper. I mean, mean like a big, just imagine a dictionary, a dictionary of papers that we have to submit to buy a house. You know, Japan with them komakai, the detailed. Lord of mercy, the one so, with your blood type and your shoe size, everything, your height and so, weight, everything. Mm. It, it, all kind of something you have to submit. As an application and everything in a Japanese in a mind. Yeah. So after a while, every day I go in and may I stress out with this thing in a stress out. I stress out at work already mm-hmm. because actually I wasn't getting along well with my co-work, with my co-work, I'm a boss. Mm-hmm. And I was while I was training, I was also teaching at a school at the same time because I couldn't get along with my boss. I asked one of the higher ups and said, "Hey." We can go in at the school sometime every now and again for teach because we can't deal with them to bread mm. So um, I was stressed, but I didn't know it. And then I remember one time going into the office, not to scare anybody. And I looked at my hands and I saw my hands trembling. Mm-hmm. And we just I look, I started looking at my hand. And I was like, wait, what, what's this? And I just brush it off. Anyway, eventually got the house. and now I'm on break. Some of mine free. Yeah. Mind free, I'm on break. And then suddenly I feel like but then at this space, this 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 weird area and it's like my mind went blank and I couldn't understand what was happening. Mm. And I only feel like tears just start coming down my eyes because my thing said I was going crazy. Yeah. And then um talk to my wife. Um, started talking to people, realized I start having some nightmare and all kind of something. So I went to the doctor to check my head because I thought I was going nuts, seriously. So yeah. the Mental health is me. not really a thing that is explored in Jamaica and worse in Japan, but yeah. Exactly. And um, 
So I went to the doctor and uh, them checked me. They, they get, well, MRI or CAT scan. I don't remember which one. I think it was a CAT scan. Mm-hmm. Doctor looked at my brain and said, Boss, you're okay. Take these tablets. <laughs> so they gave me some, some just proper Japanese style. Some, some um, stress and anxiety medication. Mm-hmm. And my wife said, Dave, my wife is a nurse. She said, Dave, take that thing one time and don't take it again. <laughs> Bill, Bill, yeah. Bill, and it was a process, and I started to talk to people every now and again. Most of them couldn't understand what me talking about, cause Jamaicans, most Jamaicans, everybody happy, you're stressed, but you're happy the same way. Yeah, man. And I talked to a few people, and then a couple of people said, "Yes, man, I know exactly what you're talking about." And a lot of them in Japan, a couple of people in Japan said, "Yes, yes, yes, I know that, I know that feeling," and it is. Very scary. So I went through that time and it took me a couple months to actually fully understand what was happening. And uh, so I, after, I can't say like after a full year, after a full year or so, I kind of understand what was happening and what prompted it and how to minimize it from happening. It's pretty much relax and get yourself just relax, mm-hmm. stretch. Um, don't think. Tra- well, I can't say don't think too much because that's thinking is automatic. Yeah. Just pretty much try to relax. Get yourself together and try to relax. Do some deep breathing exercise. Do some every now and again. Not too much exercise because that can trigger it as well. Yeah. Um, get some exercise in a system. Eat properly. Sleep well, and just do a proper routine. Day in, day out, and not stress too much about anything. Especially the things anything, that we can't control. Anything. Yeah. The future. So like like what all this situation now, COVID-19, I hear people getting anxiety. This I got through that long time. So for me, this is nothing. Mm. Right. So, but th- th- that experience taught me a lot, you know. It taught me a lot about myself. And... um. I, I think I am more or less fully over it now. I mean, every now and again, something might come up, but me know, I know what prompted it. So I know mm. how to, I pretty much know how to deal with it. Yeah, it's and all about the growth honest, and development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I can tell you, some people, some people probably would maybe disagree or what. I'm actually happy I experienced it because it, it, helped, it helped me as a person to know myself and I, I, I grew, I think I grew um, personally and spiritually. Yeah. As, as, um, as a, because of that situation, yeah? Okay. But yeah, um, but every, every, like every year I get this thing, like there's this change of season thing in Japan that hmm. kind of make my head feel funny. Yeah, man. Every, two, at least two or three times a year, like, um between winter when the winter going to become spring uh-huh. and, and when the summer going to become winter that autumn time right yeah man so definitely we can relate the to the air those pressure two. change man the air yeah, pressure man. change that november into december get funny bridging and then that like march into april type yes and then like it's like transfers from your job and you know, different things moving around and different things happening or not happening. Definitely, yes. that's something that not really happening in Jamaica or like we can relate to, where yeah. it kind of like things here is so seasonal and so ever changing. You know, it's normal for people to be just be transferred out. Of you, that you, don't, you don't even know who or when or where are people yeah. to just you know. You know, it happens in Jamaica, but not to the extent where you know, it, it different, happens here. I was speaking to one of my Jamaican friends when I was telling her my experience. And she said, oh, well, she said when she was in Jamaica, she used to have panic attack too from mm-hmm. her job. And I was like, wow, you're the first Jamaican in Jamaica that, that I knew that happened to. Nobody, I, I, I don't know anybody else. Yeah. But anyway. But yeah, that, that, that's pretty much, I could say, probably my worst, but worst experience. But I, I, I learned from it. Definitely. Mm. But switching gears now from the worst, tell me about yeah. the best experience that you've had in Japan in the what now twelve years plus that you've lived here. There's so many of them. Um, actually, 
getting out of Japan is a good experience. <laughs> <sometimes>. <laughs> um, visiting, you see, being in Japan mm-hmm. for, for a long time, and then you get out of it and then go somewhere else, it feels like, feel like magic. Yeah. Even when, when I go back, like my first time going back to Jamaica, mm-hmm. it felt it felt amazing. So people would probably ask why you don't go back to Jamaica. Then if you go back to Jamaica, you just go back to the same thing. And yeah. everything would just feel like normal. Also, the, uh, the it would be weird to just get up, leave my house and my job, and then go back to Jamaica. Go do it. <laughs> go, go live with my mother. No, no. <laughs> not right now. I, I don't put it off as 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 if um, I'm not like I have any. I don't have any plans to do that. But um, I may go back in the future. But who knows? Yeah, actually, like going to Germany from Japan was an interesting experience. I'm going to Italy. So you notice there's a lot of things coming out, going out of Japan. Yeah. Those were really good. Another thing that I I can remember was like doing a performance in front of like 5,000, over 5,000 people at an event in uh, Tokyo. That was pretty interesting and enjoyable. The man a superstar, man. I no, no, ask for no, autograph not, next time I see you. Not at all, sir. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but and, and another thing that that I don't I don't I don't know if it's a best experience, but it's an interesting experience when I was doing my my little lesson thing, and somebody joined, and I was telling the person about myself, and the girl said, Ah, I know you. I see you on TV. I was like, Whoa, <laughs> interesting. See it there. So. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's... But yeah, there's mm. a lot of good stuff in Japan, and and the, the, the a lot of possibilities are here. Yeah. I mean, even though the place kind of weird, to be honest, but um, yeah. I, there's, there's a, I don't know, call it, call me strange, but there's a lot of things I like about this weirdness. Yeah, it's it's different and it's it's new, so we have to live and grow and develop as as people, you know. Yep. Yeah. So any speaking of. You know the weirdness of Japan. No disrespect intended, but like, is there any advice that you would give to foreigners living in Japan, um, from someone like you who has been here for a long time, being a long-term resident, whether it is a Jamaicans coming to Japan or just any expat or foreigner as a whole coming? Mm. I would say like make make some plans about your future. What what do you want to achieve in the next three to five years? You I want see. to just live? Is it just living? That might make you get a little bit confused here in Japan. Um, I think people should set some kind of plan, have some kind of game plan about what they want to do within the next say, three to five years or even ten years. What What do you want personally out of your life? And I made that. I, I did something like that. I read a book. Um. And that gave me that idea back in 2010. And a couple of things I wrote down was like, one, I wanted to write a book. Mm-hmm. Two, I wanted, to, I wanted to buy a house. Three, I wanted to get married. See it there. Um, I wanted to start a business. And I wanted to complete, uh, I wanted to complete a master's course. Yeah. And I wrote down all of them on a piece of paper. And I put it in the ceiling. And every morning I got up, I look at the paper. Until it starts actually bother me. And I said, no, man, I need to start working on this thing. Yeah. So I started one by one. Which is the first thing? All right. Book. Get things together. Start calling up some people. And start writing. Every day I went, got, got home from work, I started writing a little one paragraph or one page of the book. Mm-hmm. And the space of like six months, um, I actually published the book in both English and Japanese because I got some help from people. Yeah. But yeah, generally, I would say, yeah, um, make some plans for the future and um, just know what you want out of being here or else you're going to kind of feel stuck and don't know like what what is next? What is next? Do you want to go back to your country and start over or do you want to stay here? Another thing would be to study Japanese. Yes, definitely. Study I can, Japanese. I can swear um, for that advice as well. I, I've been here 12 years and I'm still not fluent. Mm-hmm. But, um, and that, that now I'm working in a Japanese company. And knowing more Japanese would certainly help. 
good thing that a lot of people there can speak English and I don't I don't necessarily need to speak Japanese but I mean if to, to be honest to be to if you want to rise in Japan you're going to need some Japanese some people do it without the Japanese you know but you you can count them man you can count the amount of people yeah if you want this is the to exception be, not the norm exactly you need to know some Japanese to 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 get if you want to rise in this in Makes this sense. society. Makes sense. So know what so you yeah, want. I would put that as the main thing. Study Japanese. Study Japanese. Learn and some Japanese. Else, and else, then yeah. know what you want in life when you come here, and stick to the plan. Makes sense. If Make, you just come here sense. without any plan, you you some a lot of people kind of get in this stuck, get stuck, and don't know what 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 what's next kind of thing. Yeah, makes sense. So, next question: Do you see yourself returning to Jamaica eventually? I'm I don't put it outside of the of the realm of possibility, but um, currently, no, not right now. Yeah. In the future, maybe it would be nice to probably like retire in some nice sunshine by the <laughs> by the beach or something, but. Yeah. One of the main things I don't like about Japan is the winter. I don't like the winter at all. None at all. None. I don't like anything about winter. The same thing, my brother. And the best I me know when the winter is over. Yes. Hmm. So even and it's still cold, same way. So yep. um, I don't like the winter. Um, it, it cold staying at home, and then it, it, the, the the bill get expensive. Yeah, the heating and, and stuff. Yeah, some of the winter food I actually really like, but I don't like the Japanese winter at all. Give me the forever summer. I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, some man. Japanese people would say, um, uh, it's boring to see only one season. I'm mean, alright with the one season. I'm good, <laughs> I'm good with, the, with the, the forever summer. Sometimes it's too hot, but I prefer the, some people, I don't, well, me, I prefer the heat than the cold. Same, same here. I prefer so the heat let, as let me, well. Let me knock out in the, in the, in the, in the summer. Me, me good, me good with that. Yeah. Winter, no, no, no. Yeah, man. So, so um, I, I, I would retire in Jamaica. I, I don't see it as impossible. Makes sense. As with the song go, Jamaica, no way no better than yard. So no you have to keep, no the, better than yard. No better keep than the link. Yard. Can't dash where we come from. Yep. Um, but yeah, I wanted to also touch on that. Yo, when I first visited Japan, almost 10 years ago now, um, September what was that September 2011 yeah and I you know had my ah. operation visit Japan where I saved up my money for like two years and then when I was supposed to visit the March there was the 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 earthquake and tsunami business mm -hmm. and then I had to postpone it until September and then you know when I visited you know Dave was really instrumental you were really instrumental to you know making sure things went well Mm, um, mm. you know, and I, I forever appreciate that, you know. So I just wanted to know, is that something that you regularly do to Jamaica, do for Jamaicans coming to Japan in terms of advising them, helping them, you know, showing them the ropes as a long-term resident? When people come here and, um, I try to, well, how, how do I answer this question? Um, mm. if someone need that kind of help then i will try to work something out but it's not because i knew you personally mm -hmm. um i was willing to i was willing to 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 let you in but i wouldn't say something that i do regularly if somebody that i know yeah yes somebody that i have no idea who they are that that would be a little strange for me to do something like that but mm -hmm. i would certainly meet them and like show them the ropes that i'm i, I'm, I have no problem with them I'll okay. show them. Let's go to the Jamaican restaurant, or let's let me show you somewhere around. I like meeting people, so that is that that is something that I do. Um, I have my friends come over all the time. I like people coming over, but if somebody that I don't know, I'm a little bit hesitant <laughs> to to yeah. do that. To be honest, you know. Yeah. Even though mm -hmm. in the opposite way, I used I used to I do this thing. I used to I joined this thing named um, couch surfing. Hey, you're brave, so, man. So I Very actually brave. go to people place, but you know you kind of build a relationship before you go there. You kind of talk to them on the internet until you get to know them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I've, I've done that I think three times. I, I did it in South Korea. Mm -hmm. 
I did, actually, I did it in South Korea two times. And I did it in Germany, I think, two times as well. And yeah, I actually do that. I go to people that I actually don't know. Mm. But the reverse, I don't know if I, 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 I would do, <laughs> do that, you know. <laughs> I understand, it's a bit I understand. Selfish, but yeah, I would meet them and talk to them. Yeah, man, definitely. That's what, like, what I mean. Like, being able to talk to people and, you know, if they have any questions, I'm sure, you know, kind of show them the ropes and and stuff. But, you know, like that 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 type of help. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Cool. Coming on, Definitely. going on to the end. Um, you already mentioned that you are a poet. And writer, I happen to know that you're quite the talented poet and writer. <laughs> so, Thank Mr. You, Dave Collymore, do you want to drop an exclusive short performance for the JA podcast listeners to enjoy? I I wonder which I have so many in my mind. I don't See know there? which one I would would. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. All right, can 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 try, can try some, can try some. All right, go to stage is yours. All right, all right. So I think I'm going to try this one name. Um. Uh. All right, going going to this one name. One love, one love, one love. So it's not the Bob Marley one love. <laughs> all right. It's, it's, it's the day of, it's the day of one love. All right, got you. Um, so this poem is entitled One Love. And it was written and edited by Dave Collymore. And it go like this. I'm going to try to beat the drum with it. One Love. One Love. A yo yogi park, whether it bright or in a de da, one love. One love. We is a little island, but we great. Jamaican lovely mice and celebrate. One love. One love. Uno come yaso, banana chips a sell. Me have a soft bank, but no digicel. One love. How we me say? One love. In a Japanese, Kokowa Tanoshi. Watashi no Nihongo Subadashi. One love. One love. We in a Japan, come we mix. Me love we are green, but no politics. One love. One love. Last one. Give me some aki. Me no like sushi. Me answer me phone when me say mushi mushi. One love. One love. One love. A one love. Peace and blessings and love. Alright, see but, 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 can't but, 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 well, planning to write another book. I don't know when that's going to happen. I need to actually start. Well, the plan is there. Me and my wife were thinking about actually writing a book about um, culture culture clash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jamaican, Jamaican and Japanese. So I, I, we're thinking about doing that, but we haven't started to... I mean, we have the, 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 the outline is there, but to actually start doing it. That's one thing. I still, I, I still, I still have a blog that I that I've been writing for the past twelve years. You, you have yours, well, no, fifteen years or something like that. Uh, yeah, on um, almost fifteen years. Yeah. Wait, so yeah, um, almost fifteen years. Yeah. So I, I also have a blog that I only I try to do it like 
I try once a month. Sometimes it don't happen, but mm-hmm. um, I still try to do it at least once every once every two to three months. At least once. Yeah. It's just like an update on my life because something always happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll um, have definitely have the links to your books and um your blog and anything else you want to share in the show notes for the listeners listening to this want to check out more about um dave collimore um i want to thank you again dave for taking the time to come on the ja podcast really appreciate it my pleasure yeah man so respect yeah man Thank you for listening to episode 9 of the JA Podcast. Thank you, Dave, for taking the time to talk with me and the listeners here on my podcast, especially that poetry performance entitled One Love. I'm looking forward to catching up in person soon and to meet your beautiful wife. Links about everything we talked about will be in the show notes if you're listening listening to this on my blog. If not, visit jamaipanese.com for links to Dave's blog, books, and more. Feel free to leave your comments on this episode by tweeting me at Jamaipanese or sending me a message via contact at jamaipanese.com. I'm your host, Kirk, signing out. Thank you for listening.